Are we still hearing each other? Yep. Yep. Good. Hi, hi everybody that's joining. We'll get started in just a moment here. We're letting people log in. So uh, just be patient with us for about another 60 seconds. great. Do you have a sense of how many people are? Um... Well, we've got 526 pre-registered and then we're redirecting from the original Zoom as well. So, uh, you know, if you, if, if we get, uh, we'll, we'll get north of what we have right now, which is fantastic. Yeah, it is. So we're now broadcast live, folks. We are broadcast live. Yeah. <laughs> Talking in real time. Lovely to see friends on the participants. I know. List. I'm seeing. I'm absolutely. seeing go by. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I want to say hello to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Martha and Morna, let's get uh, let's get started here. We're let's do that the, just after the top of the hour. That's great. So great. welcome everybody. Welcome to this uh, what we believe is a historic webinar for Canada's early learning and care sector. I'm speaking to you, oh, by the way, my name is Don Giesbrecht and I am the CEO of the Canadian Child Care Federation. I am speaking to you today from Treaty 1, the original lands of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Oji Cree, the Dakota and the Dene's people and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. I and the Canadian Child Care Federation respect the treaties that were made in all territories and acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities and in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So welcome, welcome everybody. We know that there's people still joining us um, and that will go on for a couple more moments here for sure. Just wanna walk you through some of the logistics if you've never been on this uh, platform um, to let you know just a few things about it. If you look in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you're going to see uh, uh, area that says signal and that should have uh, I believe it's five bars um, and they should all be lit up that means you've got a really strong signal if it's down lower that means you may want to move closer to a wi-fi point or you know refresh your signal um, typically in this platform and all platforms if you're having a connection problem with video and or audio that's more in your end rather than our end so just just take note of that um, as you will see in, in, the, uh, in the window as well, there is a chat function. We want you to chat with each other. We want you to engage. We want you to ask us questions. That is what that is there for. Uh, we will not be putting anybody's speaker or their microphone live because the numbers just don't allow it. So we do want you to use the chat function, please. Um, we are recording this, um, so you're all aware. We're going to make this available uh, post-webinar. It will go on to the Federation's YouTube channel, and the link in the file will also be shared with, with the CRRU and Child Care Now. And so it will be widely available for those that weren't able to attend today or if you just want to rewatch it. Um, just of note as well, I know many people who come to webinars uh, look forward to a certificate of attendance at the end. We are not issuing certificates of attendance. And we do have some support behind the scenes. We have Erica Saunders, Sophia Mohammed, and Rachel Vickerson, who are going to engage with you in the chat if, if required. Um, so they are there helping us. Thank you so much to, to those three. So quickly, childcare we know was essential before the pandemic. It's been essential since it ever started. It was essential through the pandemic. And that on Monday, that belief that understanding was finally federally recognized and affirmed. We wanna thank the federal government for their investment and their leadership in this. And there's this many quotes, but one small one that I just wanna to bring to everybody's attention if you haven't heard it, and this was from Minister Freeland. I believe in early learning and childcare. And we tweeted out as others did too, so do we minister, so do we. I also wanna thank and recognize, this has been a long time coming. I go back, Martha and Morna, to 2012, um, just as we started really reconnecting about the organize, the, child, the national childcare organizations and connecting as partners um, to, to help move us here today. 
We did childcare um, uh, 2020 in 2014, and we've continued to work together along with childcare organizations, the provincial childcare organizations, the labor movement, ECEs, advocates, et cetera, et cetera. This did not happen because of just a few people. This happened because it was, as Martha loves to say in Morna too, it's a movement. And it was a phenomenal day on Monday that exceeded our expectations. So with that, I am so pleased that Martha and, and Morna and the Federation myself are here to, to answer questions and, and go through the federal budget. And I pass it over to Morna now to lay it out for all of us. Thanks so much, Don. Um, Morna Valentine, I'm the Executive Director of Child Care Now, Canada's National Child Care Advocacy Association. It's wonderful to be on this webinar. It's wonderful to be talking about what we're going to be talking about. We were founded in 1982, 40 years. We have been struggling, all of us together, to arrive at this point. So first of all, congratulations to all of us, everyone in the call, and thousands and thousands of more. This really is our collective achievement. So I'm really delighted to be joining you and very grateful to be joining you from the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Uh, we have a just an hour together, so we're gonna have to move through our time very quickly. Mm -hmm. We have a very short agenda. Um, we are going to be first talking about what is actually in the federal budget, and Martha is gonna be uh, doing that presentation. Uh, then we're going to move straight into answering some of your questions. I want to encourage you to put your questions uh, in the chat uh, box, uh, which on my screen is to the right of my screen. Hopefully it's the same on your screens. And um, we are going to get through as many questions as possible. But we're also, of course, going to be recording all of your questions because in the next few weeks, we are going to be pumping out as much material as we can and resources for you to use to be able to explain what's in this budget to others. And we'll talk about this towards the end uh, of, this, uh, of this hour about what we can do to make sure that these commitments are actually realized across the country. So that, uh, you know, well, that's the last part of our agenda is we're gonna talk about what next steps for the childcare movement. Um, so with uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over, to Martha, to you. We've got a short PowerPoint presentation, and then uh, it'll come back to me, and I'll um, start fielding some questions. Thanks. Okay. Hello, I'm Martha Friendly. I'm the Executive Director of the Chadka Resource and Research Unit, and I'm speaking to you from downtown Toronto, which is the traditional ceded and unceded lands, which are primarily um, the Mississauga of the credit. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to do this really quickly. So I'm going to take you through the child care parts of the federal budget in brief and, um, talk to you about a few points that where there's more detail and less detail. So um, I just want to s start by saying that a little one thing about government budgets. Um, a, a budget is not a policy document. So there's usually not too many details in a government budget. This budget has quite a few details in some areas, but in other areas, the details are not yet available and they will become available um, to us and you know they'll there'll be further discussion about them. So what we're gonna stick to today is what's in the budget with whatever further information that we have where we can make some interpretations. So that's really what I'm gonna be doing in, in 10 minutes. Um, First, I want to talk about some things about the language. And I, you know, in a very short space, we think that a lot of the language um, is sending signals about what the federal intent is, including places where it's not fresh, fleshed out yet. So the language that we were looking for is this kind of language, that this is a transformative project on a scale with the work of previous generations of Canadians who built a public school system and public health care. That's a real acknowledgement that this that this is this is a big transformation. We like the language about 
just as public school provides children with quality education in their neighborhoods, the government's goal is to ensure that all families have access to high quality, affordable early learning and childcare, no matter where they live. The Minister Freeland said this was not in the budget, but she said, and I thought this was really important, she said, the provinces and territories have quite diverse ways of addressing child care, early learning and child care. She said, our goals are now national. And this is also important. So this is a comment that the feds have put very substantial funding on the table and they have indicated that they want to be an equal partner although this is in provincial jurisdiction, and they've already talked about setting conditions and how that will work. So those things are really important intentions, and there's a lot for many more intentions to keep in mind. So let me get to the meat of it. First of all, um, about the financing pieces. What we see in the budget, the biggest item, the headline item is that there is new money of $30 billion over five years. And, you know, just to let you know from having been working on child care for many years, we've never seen money on that scale before. Um, if the money is front loaded so that the biggest increase will come in the next year. And I think that's important when we think about how it may be used. But that being said, in 2526, the federal, federal funding will re will reach $9.2 billion annually a year, and it will be ongoing. Very important. It has some detail about how funding will be earmarked for Indigenous early learning and child care under the IELCC framework agreement. Um, one of the things on which there's a bit of confusion is this concept that in five years, the intention is that the federal financial commitments to child care will be roughly equal to those of provincial territorial governments. So it's not like one dollar, you spend one dollar and we'll spend one dollar. Our um, interpretation, interpretation is that that is the intention is that the, the, the money in five years that the federal government is contributing will be roughly equivalent to that of provincial territorial governments. Um, the we in, the intent is to shift to supply side funding, which is what we said was necessary to begin to build a system. And I just want to just close this financing bit with a something that the prime minister said that's quite important. Provinces that agree to step up will move forward on the agreements. But if they don't step up, they won't be getting the resources to move forward on childcare. And I think that that's something that, you know, is yet to be played out. But I think that that's an important thing to keep in mind going forward. Now, the main thing where there was a great deal of detail provided is affordability. So there are two goals here. The first goal is that by the end of 22, there will be roughly a 50% reduction in average fees for all regulated childcare everywhere outside Quebec. And just the asterisk is to say, this refers to all regulated childcare. This means nonprofit, for-profit, family childcare and centers for children below school age. So that's really important to keep in mind. And then sort of the, the broader, the longer term system building goal is that by 25, 26, uh, the, the fees would be an average of $10 a day for all regulated childcare spaces. The budget is really explicit about expecting that these affordability goals will be conditions. And that's been um, emphasized not only in the budget, but outside the budget in press conferences, following up and so forth and so on. So that's, that is, a, that is a lot of detail for a budget and it's, it's quite explicit, but there are details yet to come. Um, the next point I want to make is about the childcare workforce, a major, I mean, obviously we can't move anywhere unless this is really, um, th there's really attention paid to workforce issues. So here I'm just going to read what the budget says, because here there's not a great, great deal of detail. Um, and Dawn's going to talk about this afterwards, but I just want to point out what the budget says. It talks about a growing qualified workforce and that with provincial and territorial partners, the federal government will work to ensure that early childhood educators are at the heart of the system by valuing their work 
work and providing them with the training and development opportunities needed to support their growth and the growth of a quality system of childcare. And then it notes that over 95% of childcare workers are women, many of whom are making low wages with a median wage of 920 an hour. Not a great deal of detail, and we're gonna talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes. Expansion, another extremely important part on which there's not a great deal of detail, but commitments and intent. So what it says is that there will be ongoing annual growth in quality, affordable childcare spaces across the country. And it does not specify a number um, of spaces. And we could talk about why some of us are happy that it doesn't specify a number. We would like to see numbers, but it doesn't specify it in the budget. It also says the federal government will be working with provinces and territories to support primarily not-for-profit expansion of quality spaces. And that is a detail that I know that people are concerned about. But that what that means is that expansion will by, be primarily in the not-for-profit public and non-profit area. Th those are all the details there. The commitment on um, school-aged child care is in this area. It merely says a commitment to meaningful progress for before and after school child care. And it includes children with disabilities in this way, um, is actually a commitment to money for capital, ca capital money, specifically 29.2 million over two years to support physical accessibility. So those would be modifications to childcare programs, but I, the intent is to support inclusion. Um, so let me move to the last bit. So here are some further measures that we think are quite important structurally um, to sort of make this happen and basically institutionalize it in the federal government. So you've probably seen this uh, before that they will be establishing a federal structure, a secretariat on early learning and ch child care in the federal government that will actually carry on this, this work. And the second thing that it um, specifies here is a national advisory council. And the language here is to provide expert advice, a forum for consultation on issues and challenges facing the ELCC sector. And the last thing, and I think this is very significant, is it makes a commitment to, by the fall of 2021, coming up this fall, to federal ELCC legislation to enshrine the principles of a Canada-wide child care system in law. And it also commits to consultations on that with stakeholders, that would be us, provincial, territorial, and Indigenous partners. Um, that legislation will be coming quite quickly. So that is, you know, there's many more details and a lot more language. That's the child care in brief for us to discuss and work with. And Morna, I'm going to turn to Morna because she's going to carry it where we need to go in the next step. So thank you. Thanks, Martha. This is that was a really good succinct overview. And of course, the budget documents are available online. Um, encourage everybody. It's probably more pages in a budget on childcare than we've ever had before. And uh, some of us, I think, have them memorized by now. <laughs> they're, they're a big question, of course, I'm sure that is on all of our minds is now what? And how is this actually going to happen? So I'm going to just touch briefly on that. Keep, you know, want to say right at the outset, though, is uh, we don't have the answer, the complete answer to that question. And, you know, our three organizations are, of course, going to continue to press the federal government um, for answers exactly what the timetable is going to be and what the next step is. We do know a few things, though. Uh, one is that the new monies uh, will be subject or be addressed through negotiations between the federal government and each province and each territory. So there will be negotiations uh, and agreements reached with those provinces and territories that are willing to negotiate a plan to bring about the objectives that are set out in the federal in the federal budget. Uh, we also know that um, there are already negotiations underway uh, between the federal government and each province and each territory 
These are bilateral negotiations that will result in four year bilateral agreements that will speak to how the money that was allocated for early learning and childcare back in 2017, how that money is gonna be used. So at this point, as we understand it, there are going to be uh, potentially uh, parallel negotiations. And one, one set of negotiations, as I said, is already underway and the other will probably begin very soon. Um, it's possible that some provinces and the federal government decide that they're going to bring these two parallel negotiations to a single table. Um, just to be clear, the, for, the negotiations underway now for the bilaterals are for, for the four year bilateral agreements uh, will speak to the commitments that all the governments made in the multilateral framework agreement on early learning and childcare. There were also commitments made uh, that the federal government made with respect to indigenous early learning and childcare, and those commitments will also continue uh, to be honored. But with respect to the new money, that new money, as Martha says, is tied to some very specific objectives with respect to affordability. In particular, that's those are the most clear objectives. The objectives of bringing down, on average, parent fees by 50% outside of Quebec and in uh, in in the next year and a half, and to $10 a day on average outside of Quebec in five years' time. Now, the way that the federal government, the way the federal government, we know this, conceives of this, is that the federal monies, it is there will not be a requirement for provinces to spend a dollar to get one of these new federal dollars. There's a lot of confusion around this. This is not a traditional cost share program. Um, what it means is the federal government is saying, look, we have this money, billions of dollars, $30 billion that we're willing to spend to make early learning childcare more affordable. And we also, it says pretty clearly, there are signals in the, in the budget that we also want issues of the workforce addressed and we want to see more early learning and childcare. But exactly how that's going to be achieved is going to be the subject of negotiations and agreements, bilateral agreements. Um, and hopefully those are going to be arrived at very, very soon. So the other is that it's clear that the only way that this affordability can be achieved is by the federal money actually being directed to the funding of services. Um, so that is how the cost of childcare will be brought down to parents. And, and keep in mind that most of a provider's costs are take the form of wages. Compensation represents the bulk of the costs. So in bringing down the fees, that means that the federal government is actually going to be contributing to the costs of the workforce. Um, and I know that may not seem perfectly clear, and so we can try to elaborate in the Q&A, and Martha and John can elaborate on that point. So we expect, so as I say, negotiations are underway now. Negotiations will likely to begin soon on the, on the new agreements. Um, the, bila the bilateral negotiations underway now for the money that was allocated in 2017 for the next four years is being distributed to the provinces and territories on a per capita basis. Bigger provinces with bigger populations get more of that money. We do not yet know what the basis of the allocation will be from province to province and territory for the new monies. That is a question we still haven't, don't have an answer to. But the signal is that the federal government is gonna to wanna to make sure that the money is used in a way to achieve affordability as well as other, you know, other big improvements in the system and that it's being used to system for system building. There's a question already about what is this, who is this for, who is the money for? The new monies, it's very clear in the budget, are going to be allocated for regulated, licensed early learning and childcare programs, but all let all regulated and licensed childcare programs, profit, not for profit, family center-based. It's very clear that this new money will apply. 
uh, to all forms of childcare. But Don, I wanna get to the point and turn to you now. Um, I'm sure there are gonna be more questions in the chat around the next steps about how this, what, how is this going to improve things for the workforce? How do you see that uh, mm -hmm. developing? What does it mean for those who actually work in the sector? Yeah, th thanks, Morna. And you're right. I'm seeing this very clear theme in the in the chat, which we which we knew it would be just specific to the workforce. And 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 certainly, I think all of us as organizations, just even through our social media, immediately after the budget and ongoing this past week, a lot of questions about the workforce. In that, people saw that the you know the main lead coming out of the budget was was about affordability and 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 making childcare very you know accessible for families in that sense but i want to be really clear here with everybody uh, as 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 um, morna just outlined and as martha outlined you know this this is for us as organizations i want to be clear about that to earmark that is is an important point for us about as organizations this is about um, everybody right in that sense in the licensed and regulated sector that um, because we had questions specific to for example family and home child care like are they a part of it when we talk about the workforce absolutely you are okay what how the federal government proceeds and how those negotiations proceed that's going to be a, a different um, piece as Morna just outlined so let me reassure everybody that as a part of our ongoing communications, as part of our ongoing work as organizations, and all of many of you and all of you actually, you know, in your work, we know the workforce is central. We know that is central. Um, you know, we use the analogy of the three-legged stool. Someone said to me yesterday, I was in a conversation with somebody, and they said a, a, a better analogy for Canada is the hat trick. We know that what the hat trick is of accessibility, affordability, and quality. And of course, quality includes the workforce. And if you don't have that leg or that last goal, if you will, you're not going to have a stable system. So we we believe that. And I think as Martha put it forward in from the budget, it there, there's a lot of signals there, right? There's a lot of signals in that the federal government is recognizing the value of the workforce. Um, it talked about the dollar, the average dollar uh, per hour earning of the workforce. It talked about professional development and education of the workforce. So while not being really specific, there's a lot of signals there. And so we know that the workforce, we need them to be well-educated. We need them to be properly compensated. We know that we need career paths. We need career development. And you know, for those of you that were, I go back to two years ago when, when we were all in Vancouver, or many of us were in Vancouver for the national conference with ECBC, um, Tove Mogstad Sleen from Norway was there and presented about how did they get to their universal system. And she talked about, you know, how they structure their how they structure programs and learning. And you know, dare to dream that we have this future and not too distant future at that, where we have, you know, pedagogical leadership and education are fully planned for and you have salaries com commensurate with that. Um, with that level of education and knowledge. That for sure is a, is a key piece. So as Morna said, these are ongoing negotiations, right? And I think it's really important though that we, we point out that in the fall economic statement, and this is, you know, we fully collectively appreciate that there's lots of moving parts here and lots of different pockets of money in addition to the 30 billion as Morna and Martha pointed out. But in the fall economic statement, Minister Freeland dedicated $420 million for the workforce in Canada. That is historic. Uh, we have never had a dedicated amount of dollars coming out of the federal government specifically for the early learning and care workforce. So that will be a part of those ongoing negotiations as already mentioned. So we can't say to you with any certainty that that 420 will move directly into salaries, will it move directly into professional development, will it move into you know, other areas that are specific to the workforce. But the point is, is that there is dedicated money that is flowing in this fiscal year of 2021, 2022. And um, you know, you're going to see it, and it's in the budget document as well as Morna and Martha said that we have read over and over and over, it's in those transfers for this year. But again, I think we really need to look at the signals and the language that the federal government have used uh, specific to the workforce. 
what we have to do now is very locally, and we're going to get into this a bit more as we go on, we need to very much locally um, work within our provinces or territories or communities about making sure that that 420 million is used wisely, is used to actually support workforce, um, and that going forward, the workforce is a part of it. Affordability, big piece, we fully understand why that is the lead, uh, but there is strong recognition from Minister Freeland, I think from Minister Hassan, and many other um, people in government, as well as I think provincial and territorial governments too, about the importance of the workforce. But now we need to actualize it. We need to get that as a real essential, important part of how we build this system. Um, and if we're moving to supply side funding, which every indication and every intent is that we are, that the workforce is an, is an integral part of that. Thanks. Thanks so much, Don. The, um, there are so many questions coming in. As I said, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. Um, I'm just going to try to address a few right at the top, and then I'm going to ask Martha and Don to comment on a few that have, have been posed as well. There's still a lot of questions or confusion around this question of cost share and 50-50. Um, there's also some questions and confusion around the new money versus the old money. So just, just very quickly. The, the new money, that when we talk about new money, we're talking about $30 billion over five years. That is on top of previous commitments made in 2017 and other commitments like the one that Don just mentioned, the $420 million uh, for workforce, addressing workforce issues that was announced in the economic statement. And also on top of the previous commitments that have been made with respect to funding Indigenous early learning and childcare. And if you look at the budget, there is a graph that sets out the annual federal contribution in each of the next five years. And if you, to which includes previous monies and the new monies, if you total all of those monies together, all of those amounts, you actually get to a total of $34 billion. So that would be the federal government. With the issue with respect to 50-50, what the federal government is trying to signal is that it wants to move into a situation or move into a position in about five years time of being an equal partner with the provinces and the territories with respect to funding. Keep in mind that the provinces and the territories right now are contributing a lot more money to early learning and childcare. We may not like all the things they're doing with that money, but they're still contributing a lot more money than the federal government. So the federal government is proposing by the end of, at the end of five years to be contributing to early learning and childcare about $34 billion. And they say that when they reach that they, they're an equal share, federal, provincial equal share at that time would be uh, actually less, a bit less than 30 billion. But you know, that's five years from time. If the provinces add a whole lot more to their budgets, then the federal government would have to meet, add even more than what it's committed to, to actually meet this aspirational goal of essentially carrying an equal share of the funding responsibility. What I mean is that it's not a 50-50. We've experienced in Canada, cost share programs where the province has to spend a dollar to get a federal dollar. Federal gov the provincial governments are not committed to having to spend new money to be able to get the federal government's new money. All right. So when the province says, like the premier of New Brunswick says, well, this money is only there if I'm willing to put up an equal share, that's in fact not what the budget says. Um, and it's, this is very important for our advocacy to come because essentially what the federal government is saying here is $30 billion over the next five years of new money to make fees affordable and to improve the quality of the programs and to expand early learning and childcare. And all you have to do to accept this money is agree to do those things. And if they say no, then we have to hold the provincial and the territorial governments to account that they're actually turning their backs, 
leaving on the table $30 billion of federal money that could be going to actually making a new system, a much better system of early learning and childcare. So I hope that answers that question. Martha, there's questions around what do they mean when they say they're gonna bring down parent fees by an average of $10 a day? Do you have any insights? Do you have, <laughs> can you read into their minds about how they're gonna calculate an average? Would this be done, do you think, in a province by province basis? Is this looking at all the fees outside of Quebec and then make, you know? You see, th this is one of the things that we really don't know what the intentions are. So. On the one hand, they really signaled, and I think this is really important that they signaled a set fee. When they say $10 a day, it's really a clear signal that there's going to be, what we know really makes a difference is pr provinces setting a fee and being operationally funded so that they can make up their budget and pay the staff. When they say, I don't know if they mean a mean or just average is this being used as a term that there may be other ways. I, I don't, I actually have no way of knowing and I don't know who knows. So this is the kind of thing when we say this is a budget, it's not a policy document. So again, if you take from that, the, their intention to really come to terms with affordability, that's, it's more than a signal here. It's actually a commitment. This is, this is quite detailed, but they intentionally put in an average. Do we know what an average is? Are they going to calculate an average across parent? Does that mean that they'll charge parents who are lower income less money than parents who we don't, we don't, do not have the answer to that at this point. We're encouraged by the idea that they, that this is going to be a condition that childcare has to be made affordable and how it works from there will, we we are all going to have to be involved in defining that not only with the federal government but with our provinces, which more than we'll get to. And and Mar Martha, just an, another quick follow up on that and a quick answer, if you can. This question around bringing down the fees. There's some concern that well, if fees are going down and going to be you know ten dollars a day on average for everybody, you know what happens when uh, the cost of providing early learning and childcare, and especially high quality early learning and childcare goes up. Uh, you know, how, how does, how does that work? Like, is, well, that, are they going to tell providers there's a ceiling in how much you can charge or, um, you know, what? Yes, I think that, well, the mechanics? The, the, this is the core mechanic to transforming the childcare system. It's when Dawn talks about the three legged stool. So what, Everybody who's been advocating before the budget has been saying is you cannot transform childcare unless you start funding the services operationally. And when they say like Quebec, what it, what that's a shorthand for is the Quebec CPA sector has been funded operationally for the most of its budget. There's a parent fee, which is a set parent fee. There's a set, there's a province wide wage scale, which was set to provide decent and, you know, some of the people in the other, pro PEI also has a wage scale. So what we said is those three things are the core and they go together. If you want childcare to be affordable, if you want the workforce to earn good wages that are, that meet the job, you've got to substantially fund most of the costs. That is funding the services. And so is that hashed out yet exactly how that's going to happen? No, it isn't. But there's enough that we know about what it looks like in the budget to think that that is the intention. And that's where we're all going to have to sort of work on what the details look like because we don't know yet. But that's the core of what we're talking about, those things. And that's where you can start to build a system based on some kind of real basis that childcare becomes a funded service. You can't run childcare if it's paid for by parent fees solely. And that's, I think, what we've learned. That's the core, that's the core of the transformation. I, I just saw a comment from Gordon Cleveland, who sits with us on the expert, the minister's expert panel on early learning and childcare and research and data. And he makes the good point too, is that sometimes the la language, federal language in a budget will be fairly general because they have to be cautious about stepping into a provincial jurisdiction. Right. And it really is not 
uh, in the federal government's jurisdiction to be able to determine what a fee is. So all of this is gonna be subject obviously to negotiations and plans and we are gonna get to it. There are a lot of comments about, yeah, but you know, are, what's gonna happen if provinces say no and my premier is being a complete jerk about this and I won't say which premier or what who said that or where they were from. But, um, you know, we're going to get to that. But absolutely, some of the details and some of these criticisms that have been said publicly in the media uh, by some provincial provincial uh, premiers and others about, you know, well, this is leaving this out and this is leaving these people out. Well, they have a responsibility to make sure that people aren't left out as well. Right. That's part of the negotiation process. Absolutely. John, on the a lot of questions around quality. Um, is there going to be a national standard uh, with respect to quality? It, what do we, what, you know, when, what, what, how can we make sure that this commitment to build an early learning and childcare system is going to be a system of high quality that meets the needs, not just of the economy, because there's been a lot of focus, of course, on how essential this is to the, to the economy and to economic growth, but to kids, to the children, to parents, and also to those who work in the sector as early childhood educators and also in many of the other occupations in, in, in the sector. Such a great question that people are bringing up because for sure, as we've talked about here, Morna and Martha, like we know, right, as you just said, that, that the lead on this has been about the economy and about getting women into the workforce. But I think it's very clear as you read through the budget documents and as you look at the comments coming out of the ministers and, and others in Ottawa, that children are still an important part of this. We have not forgotten about them. They have not forgotten about them. So important. And certainly when we talk then about the workforce, right, that is that really important part of quality because, you know, it's one thing to buy a bunch of chairs, tables, toys, craft materials. It's another completely um, to have the right people doing the right jobs well and doing it very well via education and, and growth and so on and so forth. So that is part of our collective work here, right? And one of the things I, I like to say that, you know, we, and, and I think it's really great, by the way, that the federal budget didn't outline and quantify how many spaces to grow by, because it is not just building childcare, a, a space for the sake of a space, right? And we fully appreciate that families, especially as we pivot out of COVID at some point, hopefully in the near future, that spaces will become an incredible premium again. And so our job then collectively is on the ground, right? And provincially, territorially in our communities, ensuring that that quality piece is, is paramount. That perhaps, you know, not just perhaps, that we, we take that child's right focus, that we look at it, and I think Mar Martha said it in her presentation, we're shifting to a, a system. We are shifting to a system. Think about it as education. Think about it as the healthcare system, right? You put the child at the center of that, of, of all those conversations to ensure we have the plan, the support, the workforce, the learning opportunities, so on and so forth for all children to learn and grow. And I think it, you know, it's in through Gordon's work and, and certainly again, as we look at other nations um, that we have seen move forward on universal childcare, one thing we know will happen is if you build it, they will come, right? We know the demand is there, and we know that as we continue to build a really high quality system that meets the needs of families, and I think this is, by the way, another red herring that we're hearing provinces come up with that you've touched on, Morna, that, well, it's nine to five, it's institutional. Well, first, if it's institutional, we should all be so lucky. Um, second, if it's, you know, it's not just about nine to five, it's about building a system that meets the needs of families. And it's not just nine to five families, it is, it is additional hour care, it's weekend care, it's, it's part-time care, it's flexible care. Those we're, are really important I, pieces. I just wanna, we, we're, the clock is really yep. ticking quickly in, and this question, you, good segue, Don, you talk about building, lots of questions about expansion yeah. and how that's gonna happen and capital funding. The budget says nothing uh, explicitly about capital funding. So, Martha, do you want to do you want to tackle that question of what you 
you know, the, I know we're, we're speculating here, but this is important issues. Lots of concerns about, yes, if you make it more affordable, the demand is going to go up and there's already insufficient number of license spaces across the country. Yeah. So what, how do we make sure, is there anything in this budget that will guarantee um, expansion? And also just to clarify the expansion, what the budget says is that the expansion will be primarily in the not-for-profit sector. So do you want to comment uh, on the issue of expansion, Martha? What does the budget say? What more do we have to clarify on that question? Well, <clears throat> thank you for giving me a difficult question because I think <laughs> the, budget, the budget presumes that there'll be expansion, but it isn't very explicit on expansion, you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, so thinking about expansion, I mean, what is it that we need? And I guess I guess I want to just make this point is that the way we have always treated expansion in child care in Canada is that we've waited, governments wait for it to happen. The idea is that it, it kind of drops from the sky by itself. It's a complete articulation of the market. So if somebody, a parent group like I once did or some of us once did, gets together and has meetings, we can start a child care center. The Y can decide to put child care somewhere. An entrepreneur can decide to put child care somewhere, but there's no public process that actually defines where we need child care. How is it, you know, how is it going to be done? Except in little pockets, um, to some extent, um, the city of Vancouver. Uh, I should say that CRU did a paper on this, which is on our website, about moving from a private to public process in how we do expansion. So it will require public inter a, a public way of planning child care, of using capital funding. We've had capital funding before, but it's more in the form of grants. If you want to open a child care center, you may be able to get a grant. And there, what we believe is that each province and territory really needs to have an expansion strategy about how it will expand childcare. And I think that is yet to come. I think we have to develop a new way of seeing expansion. So we've put it into schools a lot in Ontario because the provincial government made the way for that in Manitoba to some extent too. But there's lots of ways that we can expand childcare as a pub publicly expanding it, not merely waiting for somebody to show up and open up childcare. So this is going to require a real change in thinking that we will want to participate in. It doesn't mean that the not-for-profit sector wouldn't, would have definitely have a role in it, but it needs to be supported. It can't be doing it on its own. So if that helps, I want to be really clear that I don't know where the capital funding will come from. Um, I, it's not clear to us whether capital funding is considered to be part of in the new funding or if, if it's different funding. So those are the kinds of things that are very important that we still need to address is what does that actually look like? But it's, it's key because we can't just wait for childcare to expand on its own. If we're going to actually do this well, it has to be part of the, of the, of the transformational plan, essentially. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Martha. So we just we just have a, about 10 minutes left of time. So I want to just do a, a jump now to some of what we need to do um, as a movement. And, you know, what are some of the big roadblocks that will likely be in the way and what can we do to overcome them? And first of all, I guess we just want to keep repeating that what we have in the federal budget is a signal that there will be transformation of early learning and childcare, but everything that is needed to deliver on transformation is not spelled out in detail in the, in the budget, and some of it is not there at all. Um, there is a commitment, however, in the budget, and, or, an, or at least a, a, a signal of understanding on the part of the federal governments that a building, building projects we're gonna, are gonna take more money down the road, and they're going to take a lot more sort of evaluation and improvement along the way. So there is that signal that this is really the start of a framework. But um, to even get it started, there is going to need to be collaboration of provinces and territories. And this is where advocacy 
particularly directed at provincial and territorial governments is going to be absolutely critical. And what's also critical is to make sure that this project, this big system building project um, builds momentum, that it doesn't get stopped at the beginning. And that's going to mean, in my view, and I think John and Martha share this view and maybe others on this call do as well, it's going to mean finding who are the provincial and territorial partners most likely to step up first and to get the best possible agreements negotiated with them to set the bar as high as it can possibly be within the framework, meeting the conditions that the federal government has laid out. Um, the other thing is it's going to need very broad popular support and push from not just those of us on this call, but thousands of others. And not only parents with young children or some of us who are grandparents with, with young grandchildren, um, but also, you know, everybody has to understand, we have to get people to understand that this is an ambitious project that is actually going to benefit everybody in that it is a large economic project that is particularly important, significant uh, to the economic recovery that's going to be required in Canada coming out of the pandemic. So we, what big piece I would, I would say we're going to have to organize support. We're going to have to do a very, uh, big and, and, and even a bigger, better job than in the past of informing others of what is in the budget and the potential that it offers. Um, we are going to have to be very, very vigilant and counter misinformation and disinformation about what is in the budget, what's not in the budget. We're going to have to reach out to our networks, to other organizations that we belong to, to speak to them about what's in the budget and get them to support it and to get them to communicate their support to their own members and so forth. Most importantly, we have to convince those not yet convinced. Let's not only talk to each other about this, those that are already convinced that it's a good thing, we're gonna have to convince a lot of others who are yet to be convinced. So a lot of organizing. We're also gonna have to do mobilizing. We're gonna have to convince people, get their support, and then we're gonna have to mobilize that support in pressure, particularly, again, targeting the provincial and the territorial governments. So we're gonna to need to do this in a coordinated way. We're gonna to have to make sure, as I say, that the, the provinces where we were most likely to get the best agreements go for first, and that the others are then compelled to follow and to make it clear that if they don't, it will be at their political peril. That is absolutely critical. And of course, we're gonna to have to get the federal government to keep a stiff backbone, to make sure that it does not back down on the ambitions that they've set out in the federal budget. We have to provide support to the federal government in that endeavor. And that means that they are gonna have to answer with us some of all the detailed questions that you have been putting and yeah. because they, in, they indicate some of the obstacles in the way uh, of, of achieving that. And they will we don't want confusion to be one of the roadblocks. Um, and we don't want skepticism to be one of the roadblocks. And of course, we're gonna to have to need to get more than what's in the budget. Um, we are gonna need a comprehensive expansion program. We are going to need better public management and public accountability with respect to, uh, uh, with respect to expansion. We're going to need public accountability on every aspect of this plan. The government has said that it's going to set an advisory council up. That's fine. But we need the provincial governments to be accountable. And we need accountability to go well beyond an advisory council. We need accountability to parliament. And we need, most important, accountability to citizens and residents of, of Canada in every province and every territory. We're going to be working hard. Our three organizations are going to continue to work together very closely to put together the tools that you will need. We need your help in figuring out what those tools are that you need to be able to do advocacy at the provincial and the territorial level, and of course, at the federal level as well. And also we will be um, providing 
messages that we hope will be useful to you. And we will continue to share every bit of information that we are able to get. And we will continue to seek it with respect to the details and communicate that. And in that respect, I want to urge you all to go to our websites. And I hope that the addresses are going to be put in the chat function. Go to our ad and sign up. Each one of us has mailing lists you can sign up for. You can take out memberships and so forth. That's one of the best and most effective ways we have to keep in touch. I also want to just say on behalf of Child Care Now is we have a very big project underway, which is capacity building. And our intention is to provide support and strengthen advocacy networks in every province, particularly those provinces that don't not yet have advocacy organizations or networks in place. So please get in touch with Child Care Now if you want to help set up a network, a partnership, and even better still, a chapter of Child Care Now in your province. We will be there to support. We have part-time organizers now on staff funded through Status of Women Canada. We're really excited about this. So we're anxious to get going because really the work is only just now starting. Martha and Don, do you want to add quickly to next steps with respect to organizing and making this a reality. Go ahead, Martha. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, I guess when I, just to, just to finish this, we need everybody on this. And, you know, looking, I'm watching the chat here and mm -hmm. there's two things that I see. One of them is I see tons of old friends who have worked with us on childcare advocacy. Hello to all of you. Glad you're, st everyone is still here. And we see lots of, new people putting forward really good questions. I mean, the thing is that there are tons and tons of really good questions that need to be answered. So I guess um, my only thought is we really, really need everybody now. And we're, we will try to help pull it into some kind of a coherent, you know, um, you know, organized way that we can move this forward. We'll do our, we will definitely do our best on it. We're here and really ready to do this, but um, I don't remember a time for many, many years that we've had so many people from different, you know, walks of childcare. And I mean, I guess the thing is to say that it's amazing how strong the childcare movement is still today. And I feel really confident that we can really make something. This is something we can really make something of if we actually do the work now that I think Morna has laid out. So, um, you know, welcome everybody. We're really going to be here for this and we'll do, we'll be working with you. Yeah. Done. Thanks, Martha. Yeah. So I'll wrap up just a couple of logistical things that are coming through in this one, as I've said, and I posted there, we are recording this. We will share the link to the recording afterwards. Uh, we've captured emails, so we will communicate to you, um, you know, a lot of what we're talking about here. Um, Martha, people have been asking for a copy of the slides. Can we turn that into a PDF and share that? Absolutely. We will do that as well. We'll do that. Absolutely, we will do that. As Morna said, we all, you know, we're working together. This is a time for us to stay united, to keep pushing forward. We have never had an opportunity like this at, at, at any point in our history. Um, we, you know, I think one of the things, Martha and Morna, that I'm seeing, we could take probably and do webinars about each topic that is and coming we might, up. We might. And we and might. We, and we will do that, actually. We yeah. will do this okay. series. All right. Yeah. Because they're really important. Yeah. yeah. Because each one of these points deserves a deeper dive than just, we've just given you the surface, right? And as we go forward, we'll learn more. You'll learn more. We'll see what's happening. We will work collaboratively to get you the tools and the information. Follow us on social media. Follow us um, via our newsletters. Support us, as Morna said. You know that's not why we did this to drum that up, but that is so important. Support <laughs> us because we can't do this without that. So, um, thank you to all of you. As Martha said, so many great um, friends and and great comments mm -hmm. coming through here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great material. I want to answer every one of these questions. Actually. Yeah. And we will. With and we will, we will do something with them. The tools that we want to, some of the tools, we will be doing uh, webinars. It is clear from the comments, not only that there's a need for us to have more really in-depth policy discussion and debate about what 
what needs to happen uh, in each province, in each territory, and also federally. We have to really understand what is the best way to build a system so that we can convince others of the best way to build the system. But most of all, we're going to really have to organize and put political pressure. Absolutely, we need the answers to all these questions. But most importantly, we have to make everybody we know into a system builder, an early learning and child care system builder. This will be the first social program since Medicare, and we have been part of it, and we will be part of it, and we will absolutely win it, no doubt about it, everywhere, every province, every territory. It's just, we're going to do it. Absolutely. We are. We'll have a song. Awesome. We will. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Morna. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And thanks to everybody who came on. Talk to you all. <laughs>